Hello, you fruity cutie. What's up? My name is Jeanette, and I'm here with the Woodstock Fruit Festival Live. And today, we have an amazing guest. We have Ronnie from the UK Fruit Festival. So I'm really, really excited. And welcome, everyone. So nice to see you guys. Thank you for being here. Um, and so before we get started, because I'm going to bring my boo, Ronnie, in, and we're going to talk all about the Woodstock Fruit Festival, how it changed his life. What's up, Caleb? What's up, everybody? Um, we're going to talk to Ronnie about that. But before we get started, let's talk. What's up, Tessa? Hi, boo. We are going to talk about persimmons, okay? we got to address the mangoes of the winter. Hi, Tessa. Love you, boo. So the mangoes of the winter. Now, how do we know when they're ripe? There's two types, okay? Tessa, what are the two types? Dulls say, what's up, boo? So we got... Obviously, you guys know this, Fuyu and Haichia. We got Fuyu and Haichia, okay? And so Fuyu, I'm not trying to fool you, okay? I'm trying to fool you into trying this amazing fruit. And Fuyu is you can eat at any stage, at any stage of ripeness. I like it when it's very squishy, but you can eat it right now. It's always amazing. It's better when it's squishy though. And the Haichia, of course, you guys already know this. I know you guys know this. But for anybody who doesn't, okay, I love Fuyu too. How do you spell it? It's F-U-Y-U. And then the Haichias, they must be ripe. They must be ripe. So it has to be translucent and squishy. Yep, very squishy. Which of the two do you prefer? Personally, I love the Haichias more because it's just, it tastes like, this is weird, but it tastes like orange jello. Does anybody agree? I love persimmons and they are just mm, so good. My mom was told to eat it as dessert. Yeah, it's a dessert. It's totally dessert. So guys, check out your Fuyu and your Haichia persimmons. And my boo Ronnie is here, so I'm excited. And um, he just requested and here we go, boo. So Ronnie, everybody knows he's our favorite fruity weirdo from the UK. And he's got his own festival. He's got Fruity Fridays. He's got a lot going on. and. Um, I told myself I would never go live with Ronnie again, and I can't remember why. So I'm gonna go live with him again and find out why. Okay, so let me bring him in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, Ronnie. Hello, Jeanette. Hello, hello, the world. The world. <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie, we haven't been live together in so long. Do you remember why I said I would never go live with you again? Yeah, do you not remember why? No, do you? <laughs> it was because, um, yeah, you don't want me to say this though, because I said I we had a we had a show for about a, one time. We had a podcast or something, <laughs> which we did one time. Yeah, we did one Hello. episode. And uh, and then you sent me a message saying something like, because I'd, I'd said something about the festival. I can't remember what I said, but I must have said something that was like a joke about the festival. And you and you basically said, um, you basically said, I can't, you, you can't say things like that. I might lose my position at the festival or something like that. That was, so that was And now much here why. we are going live on the Woodstock Fruit Festival. Yeah, that's why I, I didn't think you'd want me to bring that up. There's Kirsten <laughs> in the comments. Hey, hilarious. Kirsten Maxwell. This is hilarious. Okay, well, thank you, Ronnie, for being here. First of all, I got a lot you're of not, you're, not even listen, you're not even listening to me. I said Kirsten is in the comments. She no, just no, sent I us a heart. I'm listening to you, but you addressed her, so I thought it was okay. Okay, hey, Kirsten. <laughs> okay. What's up, Lou? I love you. <laughs> Let me see who's up here. Rachel's here. Jeanette, your background is so SP. What does SP stand for? Super. <laughs> what does SP stand for? Yeah. SP. Hey, Chris. Super pathetic. Hey, what's up, Tessa? Okay, so here we go, Ronnie. Let's try to get through this interview. <laughs> Someone said my head, your head looks scrumptious. Is that me or Jeanette? Mm, you can't really mine. see. Clearly mine. <laughs> um, wait, Ronnie, you have your own fruit festival, but you refuse to buy a tripod. Why can't, do you need more people to attend? <laughs> You need to work out the budget. Why can't you get a, a tripod? I I've got a tri I've got this thing here, and it broke. I got I've got this guy, but he he broke. So I'm just holding it. Is that okay? Yeah, that's okay. Um, okay. Is this broken? 
Yeah. Okay. I didn't expect anything. Um, Oh, I, didn't I, don't need, I, don't, I don't need a tripod. I break, I have a film. I have a my own, you know, film staff, production crew. I don't need the for the festival. Oh, the jokes are coming out. Okay. Um. So, <laughs> Ronnie, I want to know your story because oh, we got a lot of amazing people here. Thank you guys for being here. And I don't actually know Ronnie's story. So, Ronnie, a lot of people want to start their own festival. And it's like a dream of all these fruity weirdos. Every fruity I, weirdo I've ever met wants to start their own festival. And that's amazing. I don't think so, they do. I, I don't so, think anyone wants to start this. <laughs> and if you can do it, anybody can do it. And so now my first question is, Ronnie, where did you, how did you discover the fruity lifestyle? Can I just address, there's a comment here that says, he said something about the festival cost, constantly asking for a truck driver. Yeah, maybe that was, maybe that, that was one it, of the things Tessa. I said. Tessa, Tessa, that wasn't like, it. Trust me. Why was... are you why are you constantly promoting for a truck driver? Like, anyway, but um <laughs> I <laughs> like how do you get more people to come? Like I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I just want to say hello, thank you, uh, Annabella and uh, those who commented. And um thanks Kirsten, if if you're still here or not, but explain yourself right. All right, okay. Um the fr the fraternian lifestyle. I I don't know. I've not got a great story, but I was, um, let me think, let me think, let me think. How far do you want me to go back to the very, very start or like uh, more recent? Well, I was, a, I'll start from being vegan. So I was vegan already. Okay. No, no, I wasn't. I was vegetarian. Uh, I was vegetarian because I went to a spiritual, I went to a psychic development class. Have you ever heard of that? A psychic? No. I, yeah, I, I went along to a med... I uh, I used to like fall. I still do a little bit. I used to just follow the the you know the signs of the universe, right? So I was uh, doing some meditation, and I came across a meditation poster for a class, and it was the class was in a building that was right across the road from the house I was born in, right, or the the house I grew up in, right? And I thought, wow, this is the you know synchronicity, the universe speaking or whatever. So I went to this meditation yeah. class, and it was like a couple that did psychic stuff in mediumship, which is speaking to spirits, right? This is again, this is a bit of a weird story. So I joined their group and I was there and they said, you know, if you keep going to this group, you might change your diet. And um, I didn't really believe them. But over time, I did start to think about the whole eating animals thing. And then I lost my taste for eating meat. And one night I came home and I didn't want to eat meat again. And I just never did again. And like, so that's how that happened. But I wasn't really ve like vegetarian for health reasons or whatever, but I did feel a benefit. And um, over the next year, I was kind of just naturally cutting out animal products, right? So I was naturally cutting out animal products. And then, um, and then a friend posted Earthlings and I watched that and I was like, okay, I'm, I'm ready to do this. You know, and then, but I didn't know how to be a vegan. And I'd made fun of, like, my brother used to be a vegan and I'd, like, made fun of him and stuff and all. But, like, I, I was that bad guy. Um, like, oh, you know, it's your tradition to be not a vegan or whatever. Like, our ancestors didn't eat meat and whatever. So um, I used to say those things. But uh, I watched that and then I didn't know what to do. So I went on YouTube. I don't know why I didn't ask my friend who was a vegan. I didn't, I didn't ask any of my vegan friends. But I, just, I went on YouTube and I, I wrote, like, how do you get protein on a vegan diet? And I came across Tim Van Orden's video. And it, he was the first person I came across talking about. And I just interviewed him recently, actually. But So he said, blah, 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 protein, amino acids, fruit. I'm strong. I'm an athlete. I've got big muscles. And I was like, I kind of thought, oh, maybe if I eat just fruit, I'll get big muscles. I, th I kind of thought that. I was like, I'll get like a chimpanzee strength. Yeah. And um, so I kind of was intrigued by it. And then just started down that rabbit hole. Just started eating more fruit, trying out more fruit. And um, was doing it. Kind of got to the point where I could do a day raw food. Then like a week. I went into work and I said, I'm going to do a week of raw food. And it didn't last. So... <laughs> So, and I was trying to like live on vegetables and stuff. I didn't know how to do it at all. So, um, 
so but but I felt benefits and then I, I so I was curious and I kept on going down that path. Came across Durian Rider, who had a much clearer message. Tim's great, but he didn't have a very clear like how to do it. He Harley was more clear and that, that led to eighty ten ten and all that stuff. And what was weird about Harley well not weird, but I'd just come back from New York. I, I went to New York in 2011, like the year that Woodstock was first on. I was in New York, but I was with an ex-girlfriend. Like, she wanted to go to New York. I wasn't that bothered, but she was, like, really into New York. So um, we were there, and we were in Central Park and all that. So when I came back, I saw Harley's videos. He was in training in Central Park, and I was like, wow, we, I, might have, I might have seen that guy. I might have, like, walked past him. And then... I saw these videos of the Woodstock Festival, and when I looked at that, I was like, this is like, this, I, I was like, oh, these are all enlightened people, like, coming together, and, like, it was, I was just thinking, this is a new, and this guy's, like, somersault, all, there's great clips in that video of, like, somersaulting guys, and everyone's doing 50 push-ups, and all, all this, like, great footage, and I'm like, oh, yeah, this is what happens when you do this diet, you, you, like, start to do somersaults and stuff, and, um, and everyone's dead spiritual and amazing, you know. So I was really called to that festival, and I went to the Woodstock, and um, and then that's where I really committed to the diet and really stuck to it from there. Uh, was the Woodstock festival and and meeting the people there, and it just you know you're just in that environment where it's sort of normal, and um, and also like meeting older people that had done it, like people that had done it for twenty years or thirty years, and. And they were just like, I just loved the fact that they were like totally committed to that that kind of diet. And I was, I just thought, this like that's what I want to be like. Especially a uh, guy called Robert Lockhart, who's passed away now, but he was like an older guy, and he was like exercising in the morning, doing pull ups and all this stuff. And I was, I was like, I want to be like that guy. I like that's what I want to be like when I'm his age. So that you know, that was that was where it went to from from there. That's basically the start of my. My 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 raw vegan journey, as people want to call it. So you started. This is so interesting, Ronnie, because I've never <laughs> asked you. Because you know, I don't really want to talk to you, but now I am asking you <laughs> these questions, and I want to know. And I'm so interested. So you started in 2011. Yes, that's right. Yeah. That's the first year of the festival. Wow, that's amazing. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it was literally, uh, literally, it was, it was like September 2011 was when I found those videos and started going with it. So it's it's like I came home from New York and I don't know if I'd somehow picked up the energy or something. Like that's, in, you know, in a mystical way, I'm like, maybe I was like walked past the Fruit Luck or something in Central Park or who knows. Like, I don't I don't know. I picked up something maybe from being there. But um, yeah, and, I've, and it's funny because when I was leaving there, I said to my girlfriend at the time, I was like, she said, would you go back to New York? And I was like, probably not, like, unless I had a reason. And I, I went back to New York every single year after that. <laughs> like, yeah, Ronnie has every been, single year. yeah, you've been at the 10, you've been at 10 fruit festivals, right? Yeah, I went to all the ones at Camp Walden. I never met, there's one in Hawaii that I didn't go to, and I didn't go to the first one. But yes, um, yes. Camp Walden is like, like, uh, like a sacred place for me, you know. So, yeah, I, I, sorry. No, same, totally. I think that's for a lot of people that have gone. It's a very special place, and my life changed there for sure. My whole life changed, and so, um, okay, I have so many questions for you, Ronnie. But I want to jump to you starting your own fruit festival because literally, that is a dream for so many raw vegans because they want community and. You know, the Woodstock Fruit Festival is amazing. And, you know, the fruit's amazing. The nature, the land is amazing. But it has nothing to do with that. You know, as you know, it's all about the community and the people that go. That's the magic of the festival. And so I, I know why people want to start their own, because they want to create that magic in their hometown. And you actually did it. And so can you tell me, when did you start the UK Fruit Festival? What year? Yeah, so I came home from Woodstock in 2012. And when I went and I was like, I was at, at that time as well. And I don't know if it's as much like that now, but 
then it was like this is a mission this is a movement and like you know there was there there was real like when Michael Arnstein gave a presentation at the start and all the different speakers like it was really like this is this is taking over the world that, that was the feeling of the time, right cuz like the festival had like doubled in size in a year or something it was like this is going to keep on like just getting bigger and bigger right so and uh, we're going to be too big for Camp Walden, you know. It was, that was like the the vibe. Like we're probably only going to be here one or two years. It's going to be way too big, you know. Um, and uh, so I came home like I wanted, like help to share this message where I I totally believed in the whole message, right? And then um, so but I also like was new and didn't really still was quite new to the whole thing. So I. Uh, went online and like there was a guy called Evan Rock had a meetup group, meetup.com. So I came home and I thought, well, I'll start a meetup group. And I went on the 30 bananas a day forum and I was looking for people in my city because I was kind of thinking I want to find people to learn from. And um, what what I kind of found was a lot of the people that were ha had been interested, but they, they weren't so interested. What, like they'd kind of come and gone or whatever. Um, they maybe had a passing interest. And um, so I started a meetup group and that was like the first little thing I did. And there were friends that were from the UK that had been at Woodstock. And we, I think we had a meetup that year, but it was like just uh, maybe in, in London or something. We might have had a little gathering. We had a WhatsApp group and all that stuff. So um, <clears throat> there was a group that was kind of meeting up uh, in the UK and the next year I said to myself like I'm gonna I love I totally love the festival I was like this is the best thing in my life that, that was literally what I thought to myself like this is the best thing in my life right now is this community and this festival that I went to right and I believe in that sort of follow your excitement thing right oh you follow your highest excitement right so I um I thought, like, I'm just going to go to more of these festivals. So the next year, I, I and I had a friend called Connor, who I met at Woodstock, and he's he's not been going in a while, but he was going to Thailand. So I went to Thailand, kind of followed him out to Thailand. Um, and then there was a bunch of festivals in Europe, like there was a Danish festival, there was a Sp Spanish festival, there was a Slovenia festival. A lot of these, some the Danish festival was actually older than Woodstock, but like the, the Slovenian festival was new. So there's like these events were kind of popping up. And um, so I kind of thought, right, I'm just going to go to all these. Like I just eventually sort of thought, I'm going to go to all these events. And I loved all of them. Like every single one of them, I was like, loved it. And I just got so into it. And I loved learning from the, the, the teachers and the mentors as well. Like I, I, I really took that seriously. I was like, I like going to the lectures and stuff. I wasn't just there. I was never like a trying to hook up guy, you know, like that's some people, that's fine if you want to do that at festivals, but I was like a, I was like trying to learn and stuff and, and all that stuff. So, um, we'll get back but to then, that. We'll get back but to that, that group, that, that group from the UK, uh, the lady that was kind of organizing the group, she sort of disappeared. She was one of these people that sort of would disappear now and again. So I think that I sort of volunteered to uh, help organize a little gathering and it kind of became slightly bigger. We we, we, we had this little campsite and there was uh, what's called yurts, like Mongolians have these big tents, but they're like, they're like nice tents. So we organized that. So I basically organized that and um, there were, we made it open to the public and like 25 people came and it was quite a good weekend, and, and it was just, it was like, right, they were just friends meeting up. But I, I'd had this excitement in me and this thing of, like, we should do a festival, we should do a festival, we should do a festival. And I'd never done anything like that. But I was kind of like, I need to do something in my life, you know, I need to do something. <laughs> right? So, um, I saw, and uh, basically I said to the guys at that little thing with, like, 25 people at it, I said, I'm, I want to put on a festival. If anyone wants to help or be part of it, let's, we'll have a meeting at, you know, whatever time in tent number two or whatever. And like 10 people came to the, join the meeting, you know, and we just decided to, you know, try and make a festival happen. 
and and it, it went from there basically that was the that was the the idea to start and um and yeah and then and then that led to like a really crazy year like a very bizarre year of my life and difficult year but you know um the yeah, well, that, well that's that up to there i don't know if you want to know any more details than that but but basically well, that was that was what it was we're getting a lot of comments here sexy people we are we are so chris kendall one of our favorite people on earth um he doesn't want to be weird but he just called us cute there's nothing weird about admitting that we're cute, Chris. There's nothing weird we about that. Called, we got called cute by Kirsten Maxwell as well. We're cute because we eat fruit. So that's cuties. what happens. That's what happens. Um, so, uh, yeah, we got a lot of questions, Ronnie. So let's pause your uh, lengthy answers to answer a few questions. Okay, boo? <laughs> so here we go. What Number <laughs> one, what is your favorite fruit, Ronnie? Uh, probably durian. Yes. I don't know if they're asking you or me, so I'm just going to answer the questions too. So, um, durian, it is for me as well. Okay. Can I just question. say, like, I, I almost never eat durian, but I probably would put it as my favorite fruit. Like, it's, I, I eat a lot of tomatoes. I eat more tomatoes than durian, but I don't want to say tomatoes are my favorite fruit. That sounds, that's silly. I have a tomato here. Um, you know, durian is my favorite <laughs> fruit, and I agree, Ronnie, because this year at the festival, I literally had too much durian. I had too much but I've never had too much mangoes or too much watermelon. Do you feel me on this? Yeah, I totally feel you. Yeah, you could because durian as well, like you start to smell of durian and stuff. Like there's something different about it. It's a delicacy, oh. guys. You don't want to eat too much. <laughs> it's a delicacy. You know, so my favorite fruit is durian. That doesn't mean I need it all day, every day. Like I could eat watermelon or mangoes all day, every day. But durian is next level. And if you've never it had it, then you don't know. Okay, next. It kind of makes it kind of makes you high. Uh, Chris Kendall says tomatoes for breakfast. Like, tomatoes man, breakfast. you know you know the plan. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, tomatoes for breakfast too many times, but it's not it's not what I'd recommend. But yeah. Ronnie, have you been <laughs> high? Have you ever gotten high on durian? I would say so. Yeah, but I would say you know, it, it's like a little bit of a third eye pop feeling, like a kind of a little bit of a bing. But um, <laughs> yeah, I felt good from durian, but also like I felt. The, the for me the best feeling from fruit that I was so profound and strong in the first year of of eating a lot of fruit was um the the waves of gratitude the just like waves of like gratitude that was a ama that was the amazing thing and you know Chris has got a great story about going raw and like walking down the street and like basically bursting into tears and like like f almost falling on his knees and like this like emotional overwhelming experience and, and a lot of people have had that like just from having a meal of fruit or whatever bananas or something and then just sitting and like just getting this wave of like gratitude and stuff going on i th this is the amazing thing as well like people forget about that because and rachel saying i have waves of gratitude from doing it like waves of gratitude just like proper like so grateful for life and the world and all that and um the other thing I used to get, I was sitting work and I felt like my brain was like upgrading or something. It was some kind of weird, like all of a sudden, like just there's all sorts of really pleasant internal feelings that go on that you can't really, how do you explain it to people? But um, that's another thing that makes you go, yeah, I should keep doing this. I mean, I really, like even at the times when you're like, yeah, I'd really like to um, go and have junk food again. But, but there's this, there's this amazing stuff going on here and I should I should try and try and stick with this. Um, yeah, I can totally relate. I've been raw vegan guys since 2011 <laughs> too, just like Ronnie, uh, and eating a fruit-based <laughs> diet since then. And there's some things that you can explain about it and there's some things you can't. You have to feel it. There's some things you can't explain verbally. Like I can explain, you know, I lost weight, I cleared my skin, but the feelings that Ronnie are talking about, you can only feel. And Chris Kendall, you're next. I'm gonna uh, ask you to go live next with me. So hang tight, boo. Okay, Ronnie, we have so many questions. Try not to ramble on. Okay, next have you question. Like, have you like double booked a live here? Wait, you? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah, so the, I, I, is it other questions? Did people ask me questions in your questions? 
We Thank have many questions, Ronnie. So um, how did you find out about eating fruit? Okay, Ronnie answered that. What is your favorite fruit festival and why? Well, Woodstock, obviously. Uh, if somebody wants to know if we're a couple, we're a couple of fruity weirdos. That's for sure. That's for sure. So um, yeah, <laughs> what is Ronnie? Uh -huh. So what is, tell us real quick about Fruity Fridays, which is probably like it's taking over the world and it's probably the best thing that happens weekly regarding this lifestyle. Like, I love it. You have the most amazing guests. And tell me about when did you start Fruity Fridays and how did you start it? It's a podcast, right? Um, I've got two things going on. So there's the podcast, it's called Love Fruit Podcast, which is interviews that pretty much go up every week. And I should have put up one this week, but I've not yet. But um, Yulia got interviewed from Woodstock. That was pretty cool. And I interviewed Tim, and I've interviewed... But there's 115 interviews, right? So there's uh, the idea was to just document the stories of Rob Egan's, basically. You know, and, and, so the, and that's what people say. Like, they listen to it. They get to hear other people's stories. It, you know, it gives them encouragement. They feel less alone. People go, like listen to them every week, they go walking. People have messaged me saying I've listened to every single one, you know. So that's pretty cool. So that's that. I put that out on all the podcast platforms and uh, YouTube as well. And then there's um, Fruity Fridays is live on a Friday night. And it's free to join. And it's, you know, it's, inter it's, it's not really interviews, more like presentations. So we, we have that and it's nice. Sometimes we've we've had up to like a hundred people, nearly a hundred people like watching and and joining. And that's and that's cool. But it'd be nice to try and build it bigger or get more people. But I, I we're just trying to keep it going at the moment. So, and rate, yeah. So everybody watching, I didn't even know it was two things. Yeah, it's the Love Fruit podcast and then Fruity Fridays. Those are two different things. I'm so sorry. So now everyone that's watching, <laughs> go follow Ronnie. That's number one. Ronnie doesn't put out like the best content, but his podcast and Fruity Fridays, A1, A1. It's worth following him just for that. He's not really like putting out too much reels and stuff like that. It's not really interesting, but his Fruity Fridays and Love Fruit podcast, amazing, amazing. He has the best guests like Ronnie. Who's your guest this week on Fruity Fridays? I think it's, I, I think it's Doug Graham and Rosalind Graham together. You don't get better than that in the fruit community okay so like guys go please follow ronnie he's amazing uh free ronster and um, i'll leave the links below because i'm gonna put this on youtube ronnie so i'll leave all his links below including to the podcast and the free fruity fridays which meets on zoom every friday and um so ronnie you're very good at interviews you're very very good i know this interview is all over the place um but you know i'm trying to be like you i'm trying to get better and so now, how did you get so good at interviewing people? Do you research a lot from them? Do you, like, how much time do you spend prepping? Because you are really, you're really one of the best interviewers I've ever uh, interviewed with. Seriously. I, I honestly don't think I do that much, though. Like, I don't think it's that um, Natural. amazing what I do. Like, I think that, you know, a few people have said that to me, though, recently. So maybe, maybe there's something I do, but um, I don't think, I don't, the re I should do more research. Like, but a lot of these people, I sort of already know who they are, or I've, I know them. Some of them, I, I you know, I've met them, or some of them, I've you know looked at their stuff for years, so I kind of have a know them. But I basically just have a list of questions in my head that I can pick out, and then I just let them talk. I, I don't. There's nothing that I actually do special. Like I just let them talk. So that's what people want to hear. So I don't think I don't think I do anything. Um, I don't think I'm that good or anything. I just my my first question is like, how, what, did you grow up on this kind of diet, or what was your? How did you grow up? How did you find this diet? What was your health like? Blah blah blah. Yeah, you know, just I just ask them basic questions. I don't. And then now and again, if they say something that I find interesting, I'll I'll try and jump on that and be like. I want to learn more about that or I want to hear more or it sounds interesting to me or whatever. But I think that basically that, you know, people are interesting if you let them talk about themselves. So it's them. It's really them that are interesting. You know, it's not. No, no, it's no. Not really. no, no. 
I know what you did. I figured out what you did. You're not telling us your secret, but I know what you did. You put in the reps, boo. You just put in the reps. You just did 150 podcasts. And guys, if you want to get better at anything, just do it. I'm sure Ronnie's podcast, Ronnie, your first podcast ever, was it good? I don't know. You, I mean, you can... I promise it you. Was, it was. Well, do you know what's funny? It's, it, uh, the first one was with uh, a girl called Anne Jensen. I, was, I actually watched it back recently, but it's not that different to the rest of them because it is just like I asked them what, the, what was their upbringing, you know, how did they, why did they start changing their diet? Like, it's basic questions, like tips for beginners, what are the mistakes people make? I, I, I don't think that I have, like, a basic list of questions. And then the additional thing to that is if I know them a bit. I think the one I did with Tim recently, the one I did with you, I don't know Yulia that, even, I've been to Woodstock a lot, but I've not really had a lot of conversations with Yulia. But I know about the festival, so I've got lots of things that I want to know. And I could have asked her, I could have spoke to her for like five or six hours just asking her questions about the, the festival. But, you know, you may, maybe maybe we'll leave that for another time. But like Tim, I, I, I knew Tim for, you know, since 2012 or whatever and have spent, have had some, spent time with him and know him. I wouldn't say I know him like tremendously well, but I, I've, I've had good times with him. Tim and, Van um, Orden you're talking about, right? Yeah, Tim Van Orden is, uh, is, you know, I don't think he's exactly a raw foodist anymore, right? I don't, I don't think he necessarily follows a raw vegan diet, but he's a vegan. He's a long-term vegan, healthy vegan and all that. And uh, he, he went raw. It's so, his story is so interesting because basically he was working in this restaurant and all these people were coming in and vegan restaurant and he was an actor in LA and all these people were his friends and stuff of his were like telling him like you should go raw you should do raw food so all these people and, th and this couple said to him we'll pay for you to to eat raw for a week like this one of this these friends of his that were a couple like a wealthy couple they were like we'll pay for a week for you to go raw to go all to all, all the raw restaurants and everything so he just kind of went along with that and um, got into the scene and there was like a really cool raw food scene at the time in in, in, in LA and it was uh, and he, he he created this idea to try and get into the Olympics as like a 40 year old guy to see could a raw food diet like with the energy that he got could that propel him to, to actually be an athlete in the Olympics and that started his YouTube channel and everything and he started putting stuff out there and he started getting asked to go and speak and it sounds like at that time there were like really cool raw food communities like all over the country. He, he was talking about speaking at groups with like 200 people at it, like, at, at, all, like at all around the country and stuff. So um, he was, it was, it's interesting. He was like there at a quite an exciting time um, with that, but also he became part of the whole Woodstock thing. He was at Woodstock for many, many years and, and kind of still should be. I don't know. He's, he's a little bit, you know, he sometimes, I don't know, maybe he feels like he doesn't fit in or something, but I, th I think that that's in his own head, maybe. But, uh, no, he's great. So, like, I, I we had a good conversation. But I, I don't know, Jeanette. Like, I just think that I, I don't speak too much. That's the secret. Yeah, <laughs> because this interview, this interview, you're speaking a lot. So it's, uh, the energy is, no, just kidding. Ronnie, um, <laughs> no, 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 you put in the reps, and also you're just very... You love to learn. I can see that. And you're not, you're curious about the speakers, you know, and that's authentic. And so it shows. And so thank you. You're really good at interviews. Really, really good. I thought you researched more, to be honest, the way you conduct the interviews. Um, but, uh, okay, so now I guess you're just a natural. Okay. Well, I I've got to... a good, like, like I, I don't really research, but I've probably got a good memory of, like, if I was to interview you, I've probably got a good inter a good memory of you, of what I know about you, what I've learned, you know, what I've you seen. Have. So maybe, you have, you have. Maybe I've got a good. Yeah, I might have a good. I might have a good memory, and I'm just accumulating like a little data bank of stuff I know about Jeanette that I can then threaten you with, or like bring it up in in a in a conversation like this. But like, um, I'll hold back from that, but. You know, I think maybe I've just got a good memory for that. I, I probably do, and um, that helps. 
Yeah, being raw also really helps with the with your mind for sure. I mean, oh, I, I, was, so, yeah. I had so much brain fog before I went raw. And by the way, guys, I have been on Fruity Fridays and the Love Fruit podcast. And um, yeah, that Ronnie was amazing. He was one of my first interviews ever. Ronnie was one of my first interviews actually, and I was like, whoa. Yeah, it was really good, Ronnie. And um, so a lot of people have actually messaged me and come up to me in real life at the Woodstock Fruit Festival saying they discovered me from your podcast. So thank you for that. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. That's pretty cool. They loved me on the podcast. And okay, so a few more questions, Ronnie. And if anybody has any questions for Fruity Ronster, please put it in the question comment below. But my next question for you is, can you please tell us, for the people watching that have never been to Woodstock Fruit Festival, Okay. Can you tell us a few things that you love about the festival and a few of your like favorite memories of the last 10 years Woodstock Fruit Festivals? Yeah. Like, it, uh, firstly, I would say it's hard to describe exactly, but I, I personally feel different there. I would say like, I personally feel like life is different there and people are different there. And like, I was sitting there's times where I'm just sitting with people and just enjoying the moment way more than usual. Like just, and just being so um, blown away by the people there. I think I, and I, I don't know, like, I don't know if the people there are better than some other place, other places you go, they but are. it kind of they feels, are. yeah, it kind of feels like that. And then I do think everyone eating fruit, everyone eating raw, it just elevates everyone. And with that particular camp, it's a, it was a perfect sort of venue for um, with, I think it's great when for us to be seeing the water, you know, we were right at the lake, you know, and then there's the trees behind us and we're on a little hill and it was, it's a, a, a real beautiful, beautiful place. And the weather was like so perfect almost all the time at Woodstock. Like it was, it got, it rained a couple of times, but over the years, it was, it was it's not that many days that it actually rained you know or that it was windy or dark or anything um my so i i just love the whole vibe of the place and the and the vibe of being in community with people um and in terms of like my specific memories that i really have enjoyed of of moments that i've enjoyed um the durian party this year both of them like the one at the end and the one at the start were just beautiful experiences like the dancing the wild, the first, one at the start was kind of wild and dancing and people i hate when people bring the durian on the dance floor like put the durian away so like people like throwing it around and like someone's gonna get hurt here right but um I, so i loved that and then i i and then the one at the end was like the um the musan king sort of nice formal that was beautiful i love that i love seeing alfredo you know presenting and all that stuff so i just i love it when people come together and um yeah i mean i've, I've personally like I've, I've only ever contributed to the event through playing a bit of music i've enjoyed that at times um you know being able to play at the talent shows and and things that's that's been nice um the dancing with you know with Kirsten or Paul Ma uh, Paul Isaac was amazing as well when he was when he was the, the, there. But honestly, like I just think about what moments sitting with friends by the lake and eating fruit together, and just like that's and and if you say that to people, they're like, "Oh, you just sat with people and ate fruit." You're like, "Well, <laughs> that's what it is." But it was, I mean, in bliss. Like it's that's what it feels like, like and. I think that the funny thing, Jeanette, is like there's people that have said to me, um, because I went many, many times, and, and there's people that have said to me recently, like, I should have just kept going like you. I should have just went every year like you did. And it's like, I, 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 I wish you had too. Like, I wish everyone had. So, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's been brilliant in so many ways. And I, I've, I've, uh, been really lucky to have found it and really smart to have kept going. It's, it was a really good choice for me that I that I sat and thought this was really good. I should keep going to this. And the the weird thing what what's, what a lot of people do, Jeanette, is they go, this was really good. 
what else is out there, right? right. Maybe right. there's something better. Maybe there's something else. And I'm always like, if you find something good, like just keep, just keep doing it. Like why not just keep going? And that's every year I went back. Every year it was amazing. And you know, and sometimes I would think, why am I going back? And then I would know straight away, like when I turned up, the energy, the vibe, like and um, and get you know over the years you get to know the people, you know you get to know people and you get to to really have affection for the people there and yeah it was very emotional for me being it always very beautiful thing. Ronnie, what you just said was so profound for the raw vegan lifestyle. When you find something that's amazing and it works, stick with it. And that's oh, the sure. problem with most, no, seriously, let's just get into this real quick. That's the problem with most people out there and most of my clients. And I'm sure most of the people that want to be coached by you as well, they find the diet, they try it, they feel amazing and they want to go to the next level and they want to get cleaner and they want to go to the next and the next. Yeah. But guys, if you find something amazing, that's what me and Ronnie have been doing since 2011. We've just been sticking to what works. And that's a fruit-based diet full of all the fruit and veggies that you want. If you want to have nuts and seeds, have those too. But stick to it long enough to see the results and stay with it. Yeah. Stay the course and you will just keep getting benefits. You don't need to go to the next level and the next level and the next level. Yeah, I, I like to you say You will that, go to the next level if you stick to something. Sorry. No, no, I, I just think that the, the fruit-based diet, and I would suggest like a raw fruit-based diet, but fruit-based diet is the end point of diet like it's there's no level above that for me and and you know i don't think drinking just juice or something is any better or whatever i really i've loved experiences when i've i had a, I had a time where i just ate mangoes for 115 days like nearly four months where i just ate mangoes i loved that i loved the simplicity <coughs> of that i i love eating just fruit sometimes and as I'll, 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 I mean most of my diet is just fruit and like I love that and um so but there's no like it's not a stepping off point for breatharianism or like some uh, there's no there's nothing after that so to me it's like okay once you've got on this diet once you're comfortable with it and you're happy and and you've got into a rhythm of it and you're and you're confident and that's important people have to be confident in it so that when someone's saying to you oh this guy says the carnivore diet and this one says b12 and this like you just don't care about that stuff anymore because you know what you're doing is you're confident in what you're doing when you get to that point it's stop thinking about diet like you've, you've got it you've got it going now look at the other things in your life you've just taken one of the major things in your life and made it the best you can and now it's time to look at other parts of your life like and do the same like you've if you've if you've done this you can do this for everything else in your life so maybe it's your your career you know maybe it's your um your uh, hobbies or interests or giving back to your community or charity work or um your family life your uh, relationship you know all these spirituality all, all these other aspects of life to focus on other aspects of health, like your sleep and um, even just like organizing your life better and having a better environment for yourself, maybe living in a better location, if that's like Jeanette moved to Florida, you know, so, um, but you're right, like too many people are trying to tweak the diet to a perfection level and it's it's like, there, there's you're not going to get a huge benefit anymore from going from fruit, like raw vegan diet to juice only diet or like so or, or whatever like you know we won't get that much of a difference the big difference will then come from other things in your life that you can improve so I totally agree i totally agree ronnie and you know the long the consistency <clears throat> is the upgrading if you stay with it long enough you will get more and more and more benefits you will but you've got to stick to something and see it out. And I'm telling you, so many people fall off because they want to try something new, 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 new. Well, try a new fruit, boo. Try a new fruit, okay? Don't try a new diet. Yeah. But anyway, um, so Ronnie, you're amazing. This was a good interview. This was good. Um, so I take, the, I take it back that I'll never go live with you again. This was good. Um, 
also i asked really good questions too so you know like obviously that's why but um i wanted to ask you uh what is something well you mentioned b12 real quick um i need to just let's just clarify this real quick uh what's your view on b12 are you deficient have you been deficient you've been 11 years <laughs> on a raw vegan diet uh, how are you not dead yet what's your b12 situation I don't know. I've never been. I've never really tested for B12. But I, I, I mean, I, uh, I've been a, a, what would you call it, student of like natural hygiene and Doug Graham and things like that. So, like Doug was always saying, oh, you know, you just you you swallow your spit and there's B12 in it or whatever. I don't know if he's right about that exactly, but he would say he would say stuff like that. So I've never. Uh, really taken B12 and I've never uh, supplemented. I, I'm, I'm actually not saying that that's right to do and not recommending that to people. But I was kind of, I guess I was sort of thinking like, uh, firstly, I kind of liked the idea that you didn't need it, maybe. And um, I wanted to see how long you could go and then, but that might be a bad idea, you know. <laughs> that, this might not work out. But um, the only thing I've ever had that was close to a blood test was something was something in a like a little study I was part of, and they didn't bring up anything negative. So, I I I I think I'm probably okay for the moment. But um, I would say with B12, it's one of those things that most of the vegan a lot of the vegan doctors say that you should check it or you should take it. There are some that aren't that strong on it. They're kind of like, yeah, okay, you should take it. They're not they're not very strong on it. Um, Generally, vegans, if you look at all the studies and stuff, vegans and raw vegans, not just vegans, but raw vegans, there's only one study on raw vegans of B12, but they will they will test lower than average. Generally, they'll test lower. Um, and the weird thing, I don't know if that 100% means therefore they're deficient. I don't know. But, but I'm, not, I'm not an expert on this subject, and I... Um, I don't know. I just, I, I just don't see how, you know, like if primates and we're like a primate. So if there's primates out in the jungle and they're, and they can only eat fruit or only eat plants for a while, like how would they, and uh, you know, how, how would they die B12 deficient? It seems like a really weird thing to be set up in nature to die of a, of or be be t totally neurologically destroyed by a lack of a bacteria. I think when there's bacteria like all around us, inside us, everywhere. Um, the the most the most bacteria in the planet is like within the guts of animals, you know. So, what is Doug know. Graham's? It's, it's, what is Doug Graham's view on B twelve? Well, I don't. I mean, I'm, I I I can say what I think he says about it, but I don't want anyone to think this is word for word. So oh. please feel free to research what he says. But my impression with um with what Doug was saying was. Uh, Firstly, he's not against supplementation, and I think he has done it himself at times. So he, I think he has said that if you need to do that, then that's not a problem, but that you should try and improve the parts of your life that are leading to the, the problem. You know, So if you, that's the way he looks at um, deficiencies sometimes. Is if someone does have that, what are the aspects of their life? And it's not just their diet, but what about stress? And he talks about stress being an, an issue. But he basically says that B12 is something that is created by bacteria and that these bacteria are, are like universal, like they're all around us. We breathe them in, they're in our nasal passages. You know, when we when we swallow or whatever, that, that we're getting some amount of B12, that there's B12 on, you know, on, on the food that we eat, maybe not huge amounts, but th there is B12 there. So he said various things about it like that but he certainly doesn't say like don't supplement or that but when i was listening to him he gave me sort of a feeling like you know i i don't think it's that important or whatever um but other people have had different experiences so and th 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 there's one other thing that i've seen Jeanette, where some people who are vegan something happens to them and they'll attribute it to b12 without there really being a j and, and also like I, I met someone at Woodstock this year, and he was like, "Oh yeah, I got um, a problem with I got uh, I had a calcium deficiency." He said, "Right," and 
And I was like, well, who diagnosed that? Or any, it hadn't been diagnosed. It was just something that he believed they had, you know. Um, so people do that in this community sometimes where they assume yeah. that there's something lacking in this diet. Whereas out, the people on their really shitty diet, would never assume that their really shitty diet was causing their health problems, even though it does. But like, they would never go, "Oh yeah, I've probably got a calcium deficiency here," you know. Yeah, so it's people probably are, the French fries or the burgers. No, they never think yeah. that. It's that's so funny. People are, yeah, raw vegans and vegans are, uh, you know, I heard this word recently: hyper vigilant when it comes to deficiency or nutritional issues. They're like hyper vigilant. They're 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 way too focused on it and. Um, so uh, that's, but yeah, Doug, Doug, uh, I, I don't think I've had a number of conversations about it and with him. And he said, he also said one time to me that he was in a room with a bunch of different doctors, like vegan doctors, and they were trying to actually come up with what is the definition of B, B12 deficiency. And they couldn't agree on it because he said that so, so he was saying some of them said if it's below, if your B12 is below the recommended level, that's deficiency. But the other groups like uh, there's a bit of a debate there, I suppose. Uh, what was the last thing you I said? Love, I, I, somebody called me yeah. just now. What was the second I love, thing? But I love Doug, and, and Doug's a great mind, you know, and we're lucky to have Doug, and he's a great guy. He, you could interview Doug a hundred times and get, like, different information like more like he's just he's a real well of information you know like he really goes deep yeah i'm excited i have an interview coming up with him on my channel and uh yeah okay so thank <laughs> you for that thank you for that ronnie and so let's leave the people with something okay well we got a lot of questions i just want to ask you a few more ronnie if that's okay how uh somebody wants to know can you please start a fruit festival in india ronnie well, I think there was a guy, we've had some Indian people over at the UK festival and there was actually a guy that, he came over to our festival and he was telling us that he was part of a foundation that planted like a billion fruit trees or something like that, like literally like a billion trees. Um, so I would, I've helped start festivals before. I uh, have played a little bit of a role. Sometimes I don't want to say too much about that, but I've, I have helped a little bit with, and and one event I helped like significantly with, but um, it can be yeah in the right circumstances I would I can maybe give advice or help someone. But there's other there's been times where people have come to me, and they're like they want to start a festival, and and I I did like a fifteen minute chat with them, asked them some questions, learned a bit about them, and I said to them, listen, I don't recommend you do this because I can I can kind of. I kind of have a good idea if someone's in the right position to do that or if, if it's likely to be successful. Now, that person did in, did put on an event and it was not what they kind of had in their mind to do. You know, it wasn't what they'd originally planned. And the original plan was like, in 60 days time, we're going to have 100, <laughs> we're going to have 200 people at this thing. They're all paying $2,000 each. And I was like, wait, how are you, how are you making this happen in 60 days? It was like, it was, like a really huge uh, goal, which, which, by the way, I, like I could probably do that, but that's ten years of experience, and for someone to just um, do that out of the blue with no experience and no, like it was, and, and no relevant experience, it was like really, you know, they weren't starting from a good position. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I. I do want to kind of put on more. I, there's part of me that would like to start festivals all over the world and like have a team of people. And there's another part of me that's like, maybe I should just keep make the UK festival as good as it can be and, and do more events in the UK and just focus on that. And then maybe you could do both of those things, you know? I mean, I, I and but I see it, I see the potential of these events and it's always like with, um, with Woodstock, you know, I, I've always, I've never got involved with Woodstock, and uh, and I'm happy not to. But I've all, I always looked at it and went, "Wow, the potential! Like if they would, <laughs> like if if they filled this camp, like you know, it would uh, it would be amazing, you know." But 
you, I would just, uh, you, you just have to let things be, you know, and let people do their thing. Um, other people have festivals and they let them fall apart or they, they let them die out or whatever. Which is really sad to me, you know, because they're brilliant. Like, they're a great thing to offer. Oh, yeah. That's the one thing, like, I love, and I don't, like, we've all, and, you know, we've all got, or a bunch of us have books or courses or coaching and have done stuff like that. And I think all that's great. And people want it, for sure. Um, but with a festival, like, you, you give so much to people. And you know, like, when they've paid you to go, like, they've got every piece of their money's worth and more, you know. And it's... It's great, you know. It's a it's a really great thing to offer, and I I that's one of the reasons I've kind of focused on that, and wanted to focus on that was like it really feels like we've given you've given something, offered something really great, yeah. And the people have got something great out of it, and uh, I've always kind of thought, you know, oh, if I did coaching or if I did courses around that like you could make more money doing that or you could or be an easier life or you could like uh blah like blah 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 but i don't think that really excites me that much and um uh the the, the festival has just been you know it's been it's, it's been a great by the way it's been a great learning experience really super amazing learning and development experience to do an, an event um but yeah, India. I mean, it would be great to do something in India, or there was a guy that wants to do something in Kenya, you know. But sometimes people are wanting, like, "Hey, can you fund this?" Or can you, like, is there like they want, uh, like, charity or something, or like? Yeah, no, Ronnie cannot so fund anything. Don't. All his money goes to tomatoes. Okay, he cannot fund anything, guys. <laughs> that's but quite, that's quite literally say... true. <laughs> I wanted to say real quick, Ronnie, before you move on to another subject, because that what you said is the key. Woodstock Fruit Festival, UK Fruit Festival, the Dutch Fruit Festival, these festivals are so powerful and so much more amazing than courses and ebooks because it's real. It's real. Like people go and they live the lifestyle and you teach people in real life how to do it. You know, there's the expression, you know, you give a man a coconut. Okay, great. But you teach a man how to climb a coconut tree. That changes his life, you know? And so these yeah. fruit festivals, they change people's lives because they get experience living the lifestyle and seeing how amazing and easy and, and like abundant and beautiful it can be. And it's so easy, well, but it's a mindset. And you gotta, yeah. And, yeah. yeah. and you've got, you've probably had people that have followed you for years, right? And that have messaged you and blah, blah, blah. But if, if they've never met you in real life, this, there's a gap there, you know, and the, but the people that met you once at Woodstock and spent some time with you and went to your classes, like, you you, you have much greater link with them and connection and you, you know them better. And um, that's what I've always felt. And I've always felt like special things happen at these events and connections form and ideas come together and all that kind of stuff, you know. It's, it's um, you know, it's really... Uh, it's different, and I think that people underestimate the power of going to a live event with real people. Like when people say, "Well, I know all that stuff. I don't need to learn." And the my biggest annoyance of these festivals, Jeanette, and I've just had to accept this. And it's the same with the UK festival. Like most of the audience that come are brand new to this lifestyle, yeah. and and I always, I I would always like to have more people that were raw vegans and 100% raw vegans and stuff but I don't know why but they're not as attracted to coming to these events and I've had friends from the US who live in an hour from Woodstock or whatever or two hours or whatever and, and they're, they're like oh I've never been and I'm like you are out of your mind if you've not been to Woodstock and you live an hour away from it and you're why? a raw vegan like I doesn't know, make so, sense I know I have to cut you off you're, no, you're never going to stop talking I know so many raw vegans, Ronnie, that have never been to Woodstock. And guess what? Like me and you, we were raw vegan before Woodstock. I mean, I you went, went right away, but I waited six years. I was raw vegan for six years. I didn't go to Woodstock to learn how to be raw vegan. I went for the community. And the, the second I went, Ronnie, my whole life changed. 
Guys, I'll do a whole live on Woodstock's page about how Woodstock changed my life. But I live in Miami now. I live in the tropics now. I work for myself now. I run the festival now. Like oh, this my- like I I yeah, Jeanette. Like the amount of people that I've known that you know they went to Woodstock for the community and the like, eating fruit and all that, and they went on to like. I had friends like I I can literally think of one friend in my mind that went from um like basically sleeping in a garage, like sleeping in some crazy like situation to you know, starting his own online business based around this stuff at first and then he kinda of changed did other things, but based around health mostly. And uh, you know, became independently financially independent, traveling the world, doing like there's so many people like that that I've known that like there was a uh, Elise Elise brought now she's not a vegan or whatever but Ravana like these were all people that went to Woodstock met these people that were inspiring them maybe went to a class where someone's like here's how you do an online business or here's how you promote this stuff here's how to do YouTube like Durian Rider used to do YouTube classes and then people would go and start a YouTube channel and all of a sudden you know they've got a million subscribers or two million subscribers and they're sharing this and it's it's crazy so yeah. it's it's not just the health thing which is brilliant and 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 all that stuff but um the the way that it has it transforms for someone to be around someone like you transforms their reality because they're not around someone like you that much that you know is works for themselves lives where they want you know sets their own you know, is is totally healthy and and vibrant and all that stuff. There's not that many people around like that. So when you meet a whole crowd of people like that, it totally changes your paradigm. And and you're all of a sudden like, I should, I should be doing that. So it's 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 amazing. And the my one other bugbear about that, if that's the right word, is that some of those people don't fully attribute Woodstock with being that point in their life that everything changed and they're kind of like yeah that raw vegan yeah i tried that raw vegan diet a few years ago i'm like that raw vegan diet and that community changed your life you know and they're not like um fully accepting that in a way so anyway good great points yeah absolutely absolutely and you know such a good that's such a great topic of conversation why so many raw vegans and healthy, like high raw people don't go to Woodstock because they think they know everything already. Like, you know, like they're not a noob. So many noobs go every year. We get so many new people and I yeah. love it. But like, where are they the next year? Are they even eating any fruit the next year? And I love meeting, <laughs> I've met so many, I'm sure you have too, so many fans and so many people have come up to me this year at Woodstock saying I inspired them and that's amazing. But I would really love to see you next year. You know, I would love to know that you actually you don't have to be raw, but I would love to know that you've eaten fruit every day for a year. Come yeah. back and see how much better you feel and how much more yeah. you get out of the festival. It's not about learning and, and, the diet. Oh, sorry. Yeah, exa- exactly. And I've always seen the festival as a holiday and a place to relax and, and, and enjoy it. And I think that the other thing is that there's, there's a temptation when you become part of a, a, a social group like that. There's sort of a temptation. And some, some people are like major, like, climber time of, like they want to be running the whole thing that they're they're come to an event they're like this is amazing and how do i become the star of this you know and it's like people that aren't even vegan and all that stuff like you know trying to run the event and, and trying to run classes and stuff and they stop like just come and enjoy the event go to the classes and learn about this diet so you can do the diet first and then down the road maybe you know doug graham did 10 years of free lectures before he ever like um, got a book out or or any, like and was coaching people for years without you know without taking any money for it and stuff like like the the people Karen Ramsey's probably the same like Dr Sam Don Bennett like all these people did years of like speaking and teaching and just helping people out when there was no festival there was no online stuff right there there was just there was maybe little meet up groups or something or cafes they went to but. There wasn't much going on. They were just sharing it as a as a passion. So, I always think that um, go to go to it and enjoy it. I know yeah. that you like to work at it, and you need to have something to do. You know, so I, I I respect that. But like, I always say to people, like, just go and enjoy the thing. Like, you don't have to, because people end up 
trying to run classes and do different stuff and and then they're and i've seen this with volunteers particularly like people go back and they volunteer and volunteer and then they burn themselves out because they're like volunteering all the time and and, and all that stuff so i i just think if you get the opportunity to go and i would like to ask you what is the news of woodstock for well if you would stop year? if you would stop talking i could say it ronnie <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. We love you, Ronnie. Okay, so um, yes, what what Ronnie said is absolutely true, and I agree with everything he says, except for when he talks bad about Daily Green Boost. Okay, so now I want to say that the Woodstock <laughs> Festival 2023. Everybody, listen up. I know this is what you've been waiting for. Uh, there is an update. So this week, myself and Yulia, who is the person that Ronnie mentioned, Yulia has been involved with the Fruit Festival since the beginning. Hey, Ashley. Ashley just joined. Hey, Ashley. She's one of the managers at the Woodstock Fruit Festival. So she joined just in time. So we have an update. Myself and Yulia are going to be looking at a brand new venue this weekend. And it's very similar to Camp Walden. And no we're way. Really, really, really excited. It's in Florida, though. Uh, upstate. A, a little bit up in Florida near Orlando. We're going to look at it this weekend. We're looking at a few different places. We don't have anything set as far as the date or the venue, but the second we decide on it, the second we sign the contract, I will be on here letting everybody know, sending the newsletter, letting everybody know that it is happening. And most likely, what I can tell you is that we're thinking about days in either April or May 2023. April or May. It's not going to be in August anymore, guys, because it's very, very hot in Florida in April, in August, right? We can't really do it here in August. But we're thinking April, May, and I promise you, we will have an update very, very soon within the next few weeks. So I'm very excited, Ronnie. And listen, if you ever want to present, we would love for you. You you want to, you don't want to present. We've asked you. You don't want to. So I just want you to know that. Well, yeah, I mean, I, 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 get, I feel a bit under pressure to present or whatever, but I think that, like, I am... Um, I guess I, I wouldn't mind experimenting with helping out in some way. I don't want to for, I'm not trying to force myself into it or whatever. Um, but I, I mean, I've always just loved relaxing at the thing. And, uh, and, um, but I, I mean, April, May, 2023 in, uh, Florida. I mean, I definitely want to be there. And if it's anything like Camp Walden, then I'm super, I'm super happy about that. Yeah. I'm amazed. Like I, honestly, I, when I left Walden this year, I was kind of, I was literally crying about it, right? But I was kind of like, this is really, I was thinking this is probably it. Because I kind of thought, you know, I've been in that position of, you put on a festival, it's happened, everyone's went home, and then you go back home yourself and you sit and you think about it and you're like, do, you want to, do I want to do that again? And you have to really seriously think about it. And I was like, I wonder if, um, I wonder if Yulia's maybe just thinking of, uh, stopping it you know so and i also thought it won't be the same because it's not at walden but i think it will be um, it won't be the same but it will be the the best parts of it will be the same you know yeah because and, as um, you know and everyone watching this knows if you've been to woodstock fruit festival it's not about the food it's not about the location it's honestly not you know what it's about it's about the community and the energy that happens when all these high vibrational beings come together it's so magical and i'm not being yeah. about it it's so yet, incredible and both of those things were fantastic like the food and the um the venue were amazing like i i, I and there was times where and there was one time where uh let's let's just name him where john Kohler came out with an unusual video where he was like oh they should do better with the fruit of the woodstock festival he was testing it all and it was not perfect and all that and um, I couldn't believe it because it was it got so much better to the point that that of that year, and I couldn't believe he'd made that video, get, making people lose confidence in the festival. And and I would always say to people, one thing that's been great, that has been basically perfect the last like five years, has been the food. Like it's been, you couldn't ask for anything better with the food, Agreed. and they they keep on adding something better on. So that even though, but yeah. If it was, I mean, I would go to if, if it was like bananas only. You know, I would still go. And think I think we would have an amazing time bananas only. Like it would be like, there, there, because then we'd have we'd 
eat like the evenings, right? <laughs> we weren't, would be like, we're, we're looking for something to do because, you know, we're not just kind of filled with salad or whatever, or whatever, <laughs> whatever it is, but like, I yeah. totally, yeah. It's not going to be bananas it's, only, but um, Ronnie, why don't we start a bananas only fruit festival? Fuck it. Or watermelon. Ronnie, let's do a watermelon only festival. I think that would really work. You know, I actually think people would quite like that. And who and would be better? Tim, who would be better to do it than me and you? That's fine. But like Tim Van Orden has a blueberry farm. And he literally, he, I was interviewing him and he said, yeah, well, you know, at the time of year, um, we've got too many blueberries and we've got hundreds and hundreds of trees and we've, got, we've not got anyone to give them to. I'm like, And he said, I was thinking of, some of like bringing the people from the festival there and I was like we should do that we should have like blueberry blueberry Armageddon or whatever you'd call what? it like, <laughs> blueberry so, like everyone has every, everyone has their own tree like 300 people and everyone has their own blueberry tree where does and, he like, live? Um, where does he live? that's in Vermont oh it's I don't, I, there hmm. yeah but it's not that far from where the Woodstock was well, that that was the point but yeah. um no, I mean, I, I, uh, I, I think those kind of things could definitely work because people like. I think we mistake the fact that, oh, this that lifestyle's too difficult for people. But I think people are looking for difficult nowadays. Life's easy for a lot of people, and they've got, they've got, you know, soft in their head. They've got soft in their belly and all that, and they want. They, they're looking for a challenge. Well, I always, and, um, yeah, I agree. I agree. People don't realize that, and we have to go because I have to go. But um, people don't realize that hard doing hard things is the key to happiness. They don't realize that until they do it, until they run that marathon, until they go on that high fruit raw vegan diet. And it's hard in the beginning, but then it leads to so much fulfillment and happiness and pride and self-confidence and fortitude and grit and discipline, which makes you feel good. Guys, it makes you feel, it doesn't make you feel yeah. good to go on the beach and just drink watermelon juice all day and do nothing. What makes you feel yeah, good but, are the things that are hard for you to do and that you accomplish and you do them and then you feel like, wow, that's where you get self-esteem from and confidence. Yeah, Ronnie? It's also, I just want to say, like, it's not that hard. Like, we, I think that all of us that went raw vegan, like, we think, oh, it's, it's quite hard and all that. But it's really not, it's not the worst thing in the world. It's not like, the, like, and it's... A raw, being a raw vegan is hard after like 5 p.m. or 6 p.m. or something. Before that, pretty much everyone can be raw vegan pretty easy, like breakfast and, and lunch and snacks and stuff. Um, but in the evening, people struggle a little bit. So that's all people need to work on, like get the evening right, prepare early in the day, and get around people. Like that's, I, I think getting to the, I, you know, and it's, I, it's hard because, Obviously, I run a festival, so it sounds biased, but I, I've I've thought that coming to these events is like a real X factor, and and uh, if you take it seriously, and you come and you use it to learn, and you ask your questions, and you get you know some people just want to come and hang out and have fun, and that's absolutely great, but it is a an opportunity for you to sit with um, Jeanette and Karen Ramsey and um, and Dawn and all these people and be like, wait, how do you actually figure this out and how do you do it in the evening and social and you yeah. know and you get the advice you know and we'll all tell you well what you do is you get rid of all your friends and family and you just uh <laughs> live a li live a single life and you start running the woodstock <laughs> fruit festival so you meet more friends so yeah okay yeah. so um ronnie i yeah let's continue this let's do another live soon boo because um People are I need to do I need to do lives this month. I'm promoting my own festival, so I need to do like as many lives as possible this month. Yeah, let's do some lives. Wait here and okay. on my page. But tell us about your festival and where people can find it. Where people can find you? Fruitfest.co.uk. Co.uk, which is the UK, you know, internet thing. Fruitfest.co.uk. And um, where is it exactly? It's in Dunfield House, Herefordshire, England, the mid the Midlands of England. And if you come to, we have a bus from London. If you can get to London, we can take you to the festival, and um, you're very welcome to come. And there's some people here in the comments that are going. So, 
I'm looking forward to seeing Maisie. I can see you here and Jerry. And Jerry came to both festivals this year. He went to UK Festival and then he went to Woodstock. So and he was he looked like he was having a lot of fun. That's all. That's all I can say. And Alexander and I think Chris is going to be there. And He's when definitely is it? When is it Ronnie? Twenty first to the twenty eighth of July. I'm waiting for my invitation. I've been waiting for years to be invited to do, to do the watermelon workouts at, at your festival, but I'll, I'm still waiting. Yeah, I'm, I, I'll, I'll send you an invitation for sure. No, he won't. He's been saying that for years. No, he won't. <laughs> no, I'm going to put, I need to put together an invitation. I will, yeah, I'll, I'll put together an invitation. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, Raw Vegan di uh, Diary is coming, is going to the UK Fruit Festival. That's amazing. Well, I'll get there one day if Ronnie ever invites me. So I thank you guys so much. I appreciate you. And um, thank you, Ronnie, for being you, for sharing your time, your knowledge, your experience, um, and your mustache with us. And we will see you soon. Um, and let's do another live. You're awesome. Thank you, Jeanette. Thanks, Speak Ronnie. to you soon. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.